So next we have um, just some rough animation of Electra reaching down, picking up the ball and throwing it. And so if I select Electra, you can see it's still just, uh, you know, every five frames generally, a few more where I need it, uh, but just roughing in uh, some animation. Now, what I would probably do uh, if I was animating this is I would have animated the ball at the same time using our uh, control shift. And I've made a selection set here, which is just the right hand and the ball. So just a couple things, just to make it nice and easy for me to animate with, uh, with just a few things on there. And so, like I said, what I'd probably have done is, as I was animating this, I would have just used uh, the Global Transform Control Shift and being able to use it so I can move the ball with the hand, um, selecting whatever pivot I want. I can use the ball as the pivot instead of the hand and be able to animate it all through uh, that way without needing a constraint in there. However, uh, in this case, uh, say the ball came later, um, the asset, and now I want to put that ball in the hand. So what we can take a look at right now is our, if I use Control G, our animation settings, and we have something called transient constraints here. And this will allow us to be able to constrain that ball to the hand um, without needing to essentially manage the constraints, but just to be able to move this ball uh, to its proper spot. And what I've done here is I've just taken the keys of my hand and I've just set the keys onto the ball in the exact same spot, but it's not uh, moving. And I did that because we have a couple of different ways of using the constraint. One is dense, which will give me uh, a key on every single frame. But I don't want that because I'm still just roughing out my animation. So I'm going to use update. And what this will do is just take the keys that I have on the ball already and just update them to the new spot. So let's take a look at how we use uh, the transient constraints. So if I wanted to, if we have it picking up, she's picking up the ball, say, at frame 25. And then she's throwing it and she's going to release it at frame 60. And you can see we have the animation for the hand here. So all I need to do is I need to select the driven first, which is the ball, and then the driver, which is the hand. And then in here, uh, I can use shift and drag to get the frame range that I want uh, that to be constrained in there. And the thing that we want to do actually before is go to the frame where it's good, where the contact is that we want, and then grab that range in there. And now when I hit A, you can see we have a visualizer just to help you out, just to make sure you did it in the correct order. So you can see it's going from the hand to the ball. So the hand is going to be driving the ball. I'm going to take this, uh, turn this off, <clears throat> just so we um, don't have that anymore. Oh, actually, I'll leave it on for one second because what you'll see here is there's no visualizer on there until the constraint happens. And you can see now it's all moving and it's a blue constraint uh, visualizer. You can see it's created a blue bookmark for us to show us that range that that ball is going in there. And then you can see it, it uh, just stops from there. So you can see when it's not constrained, there's no visualizer. When it's constrained, the visualizer's on. But we're gonna take this off because now I know that I have that all set up properly. And um, right away, we've been able to get something really quickly in there. And if I deselect everything in here, if I take this, you can see that it's moving, it's all constrained. If I go outside of it and move this hand, you can see it's not constrained. So this uh, is a nice little visualizer to see where that constraint is happening in there. And uh, now that I have that done, I don't have to manage constraints anymore. I could just take that off because it's moved my keys up to where they need to be. So now I could just have that going through and uh, <clears throat> going and translating with it. Now, because it's rough and I've just kind of put it in with uh, just for sparse keys, you can see there's like ranges in here where it's not going th where the hand is going through. And this is where you'd want to use dents to lock it in. But again, because I'm in blocking, I don't want to get to that point. If I really wanted to get something in there, um, what I can do is just select these two, uh, the two objects. I'm just going to set a key in there. So now the ball will have a spot to uh, be updated in. And if I go back to the original frame and I click auto update follow ranges on, now when I hit A, when I go to that frame, you can see now it's locked in. The hand is no longer intersecting through the ball like it was. So really quickly, we've been able to get that uh, in there. And it's just keys again on the ball. So when we look at it, we just have nice curves. We don't have any offsets or anything that we have to deal with with constraints. It's just put those keys on that control into the correct spot. 
And now if I wanted to continue with this throw, um, I could just go from here, just because it's curves, and say I wanted to throw it down here. We can just move it, set a key, and now we have it going in here. If I wanted to, I could set another key and put it on here. Now if I wanted to see this motion, what we can do is take a look at our motion path. And with that object selected, I can select bind. And now we can see that motion path and you have a few different options. You can limit the number of frames before and after. So if I want to see the whole thing, I could see it here. I could turn it on. We could play around with the path width and the size. And we still have more options that we're going to be working and features that we're going to be working on this for uh, future uh, Houdini releases. Um, but it's really great just to be able to see our arcs and our spacing going on in there. So if we were here and we wanted to adjust it, we can just do it and we could see it uh, as it's moving here. If we want to take this one, um, this key here, we don't actually have to be on that frame. We can start moving around. You can see how the spacing's getting all changed from there. So um, really quickly, and if you want to, you can just uh, select on this and just unbind it and do it. And you can select it on the hand, you can bind it on there and see how the hand arc is working as well, if you want to work on that. So from here, the one thing that we could take a look at is instead of me hand keying this and trying to get the spacing and everything working out, what we can do is take a look at one of our tools uh, called dynamic motion. And we'll take a look at that next. And that'll help us save us time from doing some uh, animation that uh, can be a little bit tricky uh, to get right. Uh, just make sure the spacing and it, uh, we can start speeding that up, get us much, much better motion in a fraction of the time than us hand keying it. And we'll take a look at that next.